there's just a fear of having something sticking out of your belly that's visible. I was like, whoa, whoa, a hole in the belly? Wouldn't that leak? Like, aren't we interfering with things? Like, you want him to walk around for the rest of his life with something sticking out of him? It's, it's another hole in your body, so it's a tube that goes right into your stomach. In the beginning, I just said, no, no, thank you. I knew it was going to be an option later on in my life. We never had this, like, anyone in our family, right? So this is something, like, very new for us. I couldn't get it around my head. I knew I didn't want to get it. And I'm like, no, that's crazy. She's a little girl. Whether the, the benefits worth the, you know, the, the trade-off. Right away, I'm like, no, she doesn't need it. She can gain weight. She's still young. I'll fan her up. I'll give her food, bread, potatoes. Mm -hmm. I don't want her to have surgery. It's just one thing I had to, th one more thing I got to think about. So I said no. Although a gastrostomy, G tube, or a gastrojejunostomy, GJ tube, is considered a safe and effective medical device, the decision to proceed with its placement for your child may be a difficult one for you. As a parent, you're supposed to provide for your child and you know, you look after them, you feed them, they eat, they grow. And I guess there was sort of that question, is it something I did? Did I do something wrong? Is that why he's not eating? He's gonna have this thing sticking in his tummy. So I think it's fear. I think that stigma comes from fear. When you're told your child's failure to thrive or they're not eating and they're not gaining weight and they're losing weight and they're getting sicker, it's really hard to sort of imagine that this could be the lifesaver that it is because you're trying to come to terms with what's going on with your child. Five families have shared their experiences with the hope that their stories help you with your decision. She is a very active little girl. When she born, she's very, very tiny. So Emily was about five weeks early. Prior to the birth, we knew that she would have some heart issues. He was a preemie. He's got four things wrong with his heart. When they found out that uh, she has got the chronic lung disease, uh, they also figured out that she has got the reflex also, the GERD. At two months and one week, she was diagnosed with dilated cardiomyopathy. She would need to have a heart transplant. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was four months old. That heart problem led to eating issues, sucking issues, because he would run out of energy and not be able to train or do anything. He wasn't gaining weight. Well, CF is a genetic disease that affects your lung and digestive system. They told me to stop breastfeeding, so she had to get fed somehow. So we actually had the tube that started in her nose, and that's how she got fed. There are many reasons why a child might benefit from a G or GJ tube placement. To make a fully informed decision, make sure you know the reason why your child's healthcare team has recommended one. Well, Savannah was getting older. She wasn't gaining weight like she should have. Uh, her lung function was dropping. And she just didn't have as much energy as she, a normal child should have. The, the doctors wanted to get a little bigger so they can kind of operate on both her, her airway issue as well as the cardiac issue. And she wasn't growing at all, so she was not putting on any weight. In fact, she probably lost some weight during that time. Kids with CF, especially because they have to take enzymes to digest the food, it's harder for them to gain weight. So if they're not gaining weight on their own, that's when they suggest the G-tube. It is often difficult for parents to make a decision about a G or GJ tube. Resources are available to help you feel confident about your decision. We just tried the oral feeding for a couple of months. But uh, it was not working very well because like she started gagging, she started like throwing up and uh, it leads to the aspiration also, right? So uh, already her lungs are so weak, so if she aspirates as well, then it may lead to pneumonia or any infection in the lungs, right? So that's why like uh, the, the team in the NACU, the doctors and the whole team, they, they propose that she can have a G-tube or GJ, which could uh, help her in terms of uh, feeding. She's more active. Ah. She's pulling her NG tube out almost once a week. So she would have to eat all day, every day, in order for her to gain the weight right, that the doctor minute. wanted her. So I had to do something. You know, what I was doing was not working. I thought it was, but it wasn't working. I mean, we talked about it when they said Andrew needs, we think Andrew needs a G-tube. And then I researched it about granulation tissue and, and all the problems that it can get clogged. And I was like, oh my God, like this, I don't know if I'm in, up for this, right? 
I was just scared that she was gonna have this tube sticking out of her stomach and something I gotta clean. How about if I pull it out? How about if it gets infected? All these things are going through my mind and I'm like, I don't want my daughter to go through that. The G and GJ has its own, uh, like, uh, you know, the, the advantage and the disadvantage, right? I'm just getting over the fact that I was going to have a full perfect pregnancy and I delivered early and now this kid's got massive heart problems and now he's not eating and now you want to put a hole in his tummy and stick this thing in so that you can, I guess it's just all the stigma and when he goes swimming he's going to have this thing sticking out of him and they didn't want people making fun of him or looking at him strange. Well, she needed to have something more long-term to kind of sustain her. It was very overwhelming. We didn't make a decision that day. In my mind, I kept on visualizing it to be a, a huge hole. <laughs> we had a meeting with the doctors there, like a couple of times discussion. When we actually saw it, the hole was so small. And they really showed like some some videos and some photos that uh, where the other babies have the G-tube and GJ and how they are able to lead the normal life. And the tubes were really nothing and it was something that you can hide under a shirt and stuff like that. They still go to school, they still like play outside, swim. So these are the things like they showed us. And talking to other parents uh, with CF uh, children or even just in general kids that were unhealthy. You know, most of them have positive experience. We're thinking that, you know, they, it's generally better compared to an NG. So it was like uh, kind of like very uh, comfortable for us to make the decision. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it for for my daughter. It's a surgery because it's the first time you're putting a hole in. But otherwise, when you go back to change it, it's just they we just go to a room, they take it out and put it in. It's really simple. Maybe some babies who has like swallowing problem or something, so they can have G tube. But some babies who have uh, the reflux, bad reflux, bad reflux yeah. or you know, who cannot like digest uh, like the, the food like very easily, probably they need to have a like broken food which can go to GJ directly which helps the baby or the, the kid to gain the weight actually. I think it was just because I had this image of my perfect little child and it was getting past that to realize he needs something to help keep him alive and that means putting a tube in, then so be it, right? It's no different than him having a stent in his heart or a pacemaker or, I mean, they aren't visible. This is just a visible one, so. The idea of caring for a G or GJ tube may be frightening. You'll be given education, guidance, and resources to look after your child's G or GJ tube well. They, they taught me everything, like how to uh, give them medications and how to take care of the G tube site and how to feed the baby, like you know how, what kind of tube she'll be getting, um, sizing, and and the, and the options that she would have down the road. I was like in tears. I'm like, I'm never, we're never going to be able to do this. It's so difficult. And he was like, Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. No, I was kind of prepared. I went for a class, learned quite a bit there. Lots of information on the website. Uh, the day of the surgery, more information. Uh, the day after surgery and the three days that I was in the hospital, the nurses were great teaching me everything. Uh, everything I got to do in regards to cleaning, uh, sterilizing, all of that. The first few times you have to do the feed or you have to change, like obviously change it and stuff, it's sort of scary because it's a new oh, thing. Looking after your child's G or GJ tube can be time consuming. Caring for the G or GJ tube and the skin around it is generally simple, but complications can still happen. I think it's a common challenge for both G and GJ. So since the baby is growing, they are so active, right? Like they are like more moving here and there. They are like crawling, rolling over the bed. So which actually leads to sometimes the G, G, GJ like used to come out. Come out. Sometimes when he's rolling around at night, it unlocks and it flies out, it comes out because he's just moving and it's moving around and all of a sudden there's four minutes, the pump's still going and then you realize, oh my God, and it's like all over the mattress and... The first time we were like so panic actually. So we had to call, call the, we call the like uh, emergency, then the, uh, the, uh, the ambulance came. But when we went there, like they said, uh, like we don't need to worry anything, it's completely normal. We came close a couple of times, but if, you know, with some good taping around the G-tube site, uh, that sort of prevented from from getting it yanked out altogether. We were thinking that she's playing, but we just saw the tube is somewhere and she's somewhere. <laughs> they said, Andrew, where's your tube? He says, it's gone. 
the, the good thing is when I called the sick kids, I was directly able to talk to the GJ team. So, so they just told us like, don't worry, just bring bring us, bring the baby like within an hour or something, so we can able to fix it. So, the changing of the dressing every day was a challenge for me, uh, just because it's new, it's fresh. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to yank it out. I didn't want to push it in. During the program, the training program. We were shown, you know, what a good site would look like, what a bad site would look like. We're dealing with a, a granulation tissue. Because he was in pain when he had the, with the granulation tissue and the skin, you could see the skin was burnt. And it's like that, I guess that parent, you know, you don't want your children to hurt or you don't want them to be in pain and you want to take it away. It could leak sometimes or... It has gotten clogged on us. So we... Uh, we changed the G-tube ourselves. It can get infected. We, we would thought that, you know, like this may cause some infection on her, on her tummy. She's prone to infections. We had some issues with the development, oral development. You're not using your mouth the same way the average person does, so you're not going to develop all those same oral skills. Things will happen, and sometimes it has nothing, that, it has nothing to do with what you're doing or what you're not doing. It, just things happen, don't go crazy, just keep on doing what you were told to do or what works for you. You are not alone. Your child's health care team, community care organizations and other families who have been through the experience will support you. We have a couple workers that we've trained. If we have a respite worker who's with him, they know how to change the G-tube. We've tra trained them over the years. We were in touch with some families. We used to talk in the hospital, right? Like we are sitting together in the McDonald room or somewhere. Yeah. So that's where we got some contact. So we used to talk to them. Like even they used to call us sometimes. Really yeah, because they give us like some suggestion to us idea. and we give them some suggestion, you know, like so we exchange our ideas, you know, like so it, it, it helps us and all of a sudden it was like all these people that had G-tubes were coming out of the woodwork. But prior to that, there was such stigma and I was panicked about the stigma of it because I didn't know anybody that had a G-tube. I think there's more people out there with G-tubes and we just aren't aware of it because they just go about their daily lives like everybody else and it's not a big deal. It's like a second belly button. You may feel more confident in your decision if you know what supplies you will need, how much they will cost, where to get them, and how to look after them. The social worker came to us in our room and started the paperwork, so that helped to fund uh, some of the money for the pump. We get enteral feeding supply coverage. We are getting the supplies through CCAC. It's the assistive device program, mm -hmm. and uh, they cover up to $1,500 of my supplies per year, which basically covers my supplies. The amount of money they give you never covers everything, so there is, there is extra cost. Caring for a child with a feeding tube can affect your family's lifestyle, especially while you get used to the changes. It may seem overwhelming at first. I have like a book from the time she was in the hospital, day one, I took notes. I learned what everything was that was going to happen to my child. Any procedure I wanted to know that I could tell you exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. He had the flu really bad a couple years ago and we could not, like, if it was any other child, they, we, they would have been in and out of hospital with dehydration. When she gets sick, she'll probably drink, but she really won't eat anything. Instead of her losing the weight and keep on going backwards, that's when we'd, we'd um, feed her through the tube just to maintain a weight. If he didn't get his meds, he went into heart failure. So he was still able to get his heart meds through the G-tube because the G-tube was there. The antibiotics was just making her sick and she wasn't able to eat, but with that G-tube it helped her keep her weight. We kind of just have that there as a, just as a second side thing, yeah, just like a little backup plan. Yeah. You know, we've always said someday maybe he won't have a G-tube, but then we're sort of like, oh, we like this G-tube. Like, because we can hydrate when he's sick, we can give him meds through it. Um, and it does keep the calorie intake. When we'd explain it to her as she got older especially, like, okay, this is what we got to do, and she realized it just became her routine. Sometimes when I'm wearing my clothes, you can see through it, mm -hmm. but I kind of gotten through that obstacle where I don't really care about it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just there. Andrew's been taught that it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like your second belly button. It keeps you fed, 
keeps you growing and he's actually very proud of it. We've always fed him in public and people have asked questions, you know, what are you doing? So they'll be like, GT is right here. And then she'll be like, oh, right here at my stomach. Because you see what it does is in. And then my mommy feeds me through it. And then she'll just go through the whole list of things that we've done with the G2. And he's had kids like at swimming on the, when we've traveled, ask him what it is. And he just says, oh, it's my G-tube. Like it's, you know, it's my hearing aid. It's my earring. It's my, it's just part of what he is. You may worry about how having a G or GJ tube will affect your child's social life. Some families also worry about the inconvenience, isolation, and the travel issues of a G or GJ tube might bring. It's not total freedom, for sure. So I think it limits our, our um, social life to some extent. I'm not sure how that will change as she gets older. I'll be able to feed her maybe over a shorter period of time. He swims, he does activities. It doesn't interfere with any of them. He's uh, started martial arts last year. Yeah. and it doesn't have any play. I mean, considering he has major heart issues, he's very active for a child that's a cardiac child, and that's because he gets the nutrients he needs. We took her everywhere. We did anything that we were allowed to do. That's what we did with her. Traveling with Nevea is just like packing her suitcase. It's, it's not a hassle because we already know what we have to do. We know how many times a day we're doing it. So it's just like putting a suitcase, it's just like putting um, a swimsuit and deciding what to wear. We go to the cottage and we travel on the road to visit friends and family and it was sort of like, oh, we'll have to lug all the formula. But it really, it really wasn't that big of a deal. We found that everyone's really accommodating when they realize you need that for a medical. It's not like, it's not like going on a cruise, you're bringing your own food just because you feel like it or your own beverages. It's a medical necessity. The only thing is just more stuff to carry, that's about it. <laughs> it just becomes second nature, sort of like you know, it's no different than if you have a sleep apnea machine, you gotta lug it everywhere. At first it's awkward and weird to get used to, but then eventually it's like, it's second nature. So when I was thinking about taking Emily back to the Philippines and uh, I mean grandparents and things like that, so, so we're not quite ready yet, uh, so, the, so her mother is actually coming. To, to visit us. Even I don't, I don't think it's, this is the right time to like, you know, fly or something to yes. back home. Yes. So probably we need to wait more time and see like how, how Shruti is developing, yeah. yeah. Depending on where I'm going, obviously how, um, how civilized you know, the destination may be. So like, I would stay away from anywhere too exotic uh, at this point. A decision to get a feeding tube for your child is personal but it is often helpful to hear how others manage through it and if they felt they made the right decision. It's been about like three, two and a half years now that she's had a YouTube, so it's, it's become a part of our everyday, yeah. You know, now having YouTube been here for, for the last um, four and a half months, so we think it's a good thing, it's a great thing actually. Initially, yeah. even with GJ, she was not very comfortable uh, but but slowly, like within like maybe a couple of weeks or three weeks, like she got used to the GJ, and like everything is like slowly improved. So I think we love it more now than we ever thought we would. Like I think it surprises us sometimes. I should have done it before, when the doctor told me I, when she was seven years old, I should have done it. We can go out now. <laughs> when you're in the mall and they see her, there's something in there, people always look at her and look at me and then look at her again. But now, they never know that she have this in her tummy. He's getting all his vitamins and minerals and nutrients that he needs to make him grow and make him thrive and have his bones and his teeth and his hair and everything that's supposed to develop normally is developing because every bit of nutrients is in that formula. She's got more energy. Her lung function has increased. She's gained weight. I don't see bones. <laughs> She's going to grow into a beautiful woman and, yep. And looking back, it's probably the best decision we made. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. it's yes, it's an inconvenience to a certain degree, but it's a savior. Far yeah. The saving grace of it far outweighs That the parent so. guilt that I had about my son not eating is no longer there because he is thriving, he's growing, he's gained weight, he's almost as tall as me. And you feel like I'm not that little tiny person anymore. I feel much fuller and bigger as a person. So she's able to move around uh, more freely. It helped me have more energy to 
do more sports and to do more things outside of school. I think the biggest thing is when they're sick, they can hydrate and they can still get their meds. That is the number one why it's the big, the best thing we ever did because I never have to worry. So having the stuff, the extra help with the YouTube, it worked to our advantage. So we can concentrate on all other problems, you know, in terms of her development, in terms of like practicing her to like, uh, you know, like sitting, standing, like all those things. Yeah. yeah. You know, it does, it's not like it takes mass quantities of times and it's not, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to do it. It's, it's really simple. You just have to get past that like fear at the very beginning because there is fear when it's a decision that you have to make and there's so many things that you worry about. Consider all the information and imagine how the decision for or against a G or GJ tube could affect your child and family. You and your child's team can decide what's best. It was a logical decision going in and it was a very good decision coming out. I knew it helped me and I would do it again. If you put it in because your child's not eating and then one day they start eating, it it's doesn't mean it's for life, right? Now we would like to keep it for life because we love it. it. Makes life a lot easier. It's not, it, they don't put it in saying you're going to have this for the rest of your life because if kids manage to start eating and they thrive, it doesn't have to be there for the rest of their lives, right? And medical, a decision can be made medically that it's time to remove it. And so it's not a curse. It's, it's a not, blessing. It's a blessing in many ways. It might be that day that comes. It won't be anytime soon. Uh, I've seen CF kids um, remove their tube like at 18, 19, and they don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. I've actually met one girl. She just kept it for backup just in case. She didn't need it. But she kept it just in case because you just never know if you're going to get sick. It's going to be awesome to um, to see her when she's 16, um, too free, and a very big girl. I'm eager to see her grow and get bigger. Most families are glad they made the decision to get a G or GJ tube for their child. Although there are challenges along the way, families adjust either on their own or with the help of a healthcare provider. A few families decide not to proceed with the G or GJ tube insertion because it was just not the best option for their child and family. There's probably so many families that every day are having to face that decision. Even though a nurse says to me, oh, you'll, you'll love it, it'll be the best decision you ever made. I mean, we're all afraid, like, are they being really honest? Are they telling me the truth about my child's medical? There's always that question, whereas for some reason we always believe other parents. I don't, like the, somebody who is in the same boat, my child has, you know, failure to thrive or they have a heart problem or they have CP or whatever it is, and they're at sick kids all the time too. I'm a, I just, I think that parents listen to parents because they think they're walking the same, well they are, they're walking the same path of a child that has complex or medical needs. It's nothing major. It's small, it's, it's actually gonna help her. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about who's going to notice it or who's going to talk about it because they should mind their own business. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to help you with your health. So I think there are uh, good things to come. Um, I think the worst is behind her. I would say if your child does not need a G2, then don't get it. But if it's needed, then get it, because it's very important and it, and it will help you on the down days. It is worth it. Don't stress. Ultimately, the decision is yours, but you do not need to make it alone. Talk to your family, talk to your healthcare team. They will answer your questions and help you make a decision that is best for your child. Well, I think having a video too that you can, you know, I, I think this is a great idea only because rather than talking to somebody, you can see somebody telling you like it was the best decision we ever made. As long as it helps parents make the right decision. Yeah. And yeah. Not to stress about it because I was in the same position and I know what they're going to go through, but it's worth it. Yeah.